Some of you might think that hyperdispensationalism is a new thing, where Paul preached one gospel and Peter preached another. Um, that only the mysteries were given to Paul, and that some people came up with this idea in recent times. Well, the fact of the matter is that Satan always deceives a group of people in every successive generation. And this idea of, of hyperdispensationalism is certainly not new. Um, fact of the matter is, Irenaeus, 1800 years ago or so, uh, was dealing with these folks, and back then they were called Marcionites. And I'm reading from a book called Against Heresies, and it's uh, chapter 13, Refutation of the Opinion that Paul was the only apostle who had knowledge of the truth. And I read, With regard to those the Marcionites, who alleged that Paul alone knew the truth, and that to him the mystery was manifested by revelation. Let Paul himself convict them, when he says that one and the same God wrought in Peter for the apostolate of the circumcision, and in himself for the Gentiles. Peter, therefore, was an apostle of that very God, whose was also Paul. And him whom Peter preached as God among those of the circumcision, and likewise the Son of God, did Paul declare also among the Gentiles. For our Lord never came to save Paul alone. Nor is God limited, so limited in means that he should have but one apostle who knew the dispensation of his Son. And again, when Paul says, how beautiful are the feet of those bringing glad tidings of good things and preaching the gospel of peace. He shows clearly that it was not merely one, but there were many who used to preach the truth. And again, in the epistle to the Corinthians, when he had recounted all those who had seen God after the resurrection, he says in continuation, But whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed acknowledging as one and the same the preaching of all those who saw God after the resurrection from the dead. And again the Lord replied to Philip, who wished to behold the Father, Have I been so long a time with you, yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that sees me sees also the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? For I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. To these men, therefore, did the Lord bear witness that in himself they had both known and seen the Father, and the Father is truth. To allege, then, that these men did not know the truth is to act the part of false witnesses, and of those who have been alienated from the doctrine of Christ. For why did the Lord send the twelve apostles to the lost sheep of the house of Israel if these men did not know the truth? How also did the seventy preach, unless they had themselves previously known the truth of what was preached? Or how could Peter have been in ignorance to whom the Lord gave testimony that flesh and blood had not revealed to him, but the Father who is in heaven? Just then, as Paul was an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, so with the rest the Son indeed leading them to the Father, but the Father revealing them to the Son. Now this right here really sums up a lot of what's going on, and I want to point out a couple things. First of all, the marvelous, awesome work of God, that while the devil has his heresies, he has his groups, and in each successive generation, um, he has people out there spreading the poison. Jesus Christ always continues his work. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. And in each successive generation, God will raise up men to give the truth. The Holy Spirit bearing witness and record of the truth. In holiness and, and in righteousness. 
and guiding and directing that person to teach using the very same scripture that a previous generation taught. And I've used some of the same scripture myself without ever even having read this book. And yet, it reveals an awesome God who continues his work in each generation to reach the lost and to stand for the truth. And nowadays, in this wicked fallen generation, we have great, great heresies. Exactly the same ones that Irenaeus dealt with 1800 plus years ago in, in dealing with people who say that Jesus is not the eternal Son of God and that Paul was only sent, not Peter, that they had different Gospels. You see it over and over again. And the other thing I want to point out is that Irenaeus makes it clear here that these people, when you, as a teacher, are trying to say that Jesus Christ is not the eternal Son of God, or you as a teacher are trying to say that Peter and Paul had different Gospels, um, a different message, that there's a different way for the Jews to get saved, that there's no salvation in Romans chapter 10 or Acts chapter 2, um, that Romans 10, 13 is a cancer to the Gospel. Quite simply, what you're doing is you're saying that the witness and testimony of God's holy apostles were not, were of not, that they did not count, that, that these men were liars, that when they went out and hazarded their very lives for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they were nothing more than wretched, miserable, low-life men out to seek their own personal gain. That's what you're saying. But we know that is not the truth. The truth is that these men witnessed the resurrection, the glorious, powerful resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that they went out and preached the gospel pure and true and honest in the sight of all men, and that they spoke that which was true, that they had heard directly from Jesus Christ himself. Paul, too. Paul says he received his gospel directly from Jesus Christ, and it was no different than the gospel that was given to the other apostles. Because it, we were told, let us all be of one accord. There is one faith, there's one hope, there's one baptism, and one Lord. There's not two Gospels. There's one Gospel. And Irenaeus was dealing with this hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Indeed, almost 2,000. Let me read one more section here in this chapter. Part 3. But that Paul acceded to the request of those who summoned him to the apostles on account of the question which had been raised and went up to them with Barnabas to Jerusalem, not without reason, but that the liberty of the Gentiles might be confirmed by them. He does himself say in the epistle to the Galatians, Then fourteen years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking also Titus, but I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. And again he says, For an hour we did give place to subjection, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. If then any one shall from the Acts of the Apostles carefully scrutinize the time concerning which it is written, that he went up to Jerusalem on account of the forementioned question, he will find those years mentioned by Paul coinciding with it. Thus, the statement of Paul harmonizes with and is, as it were, identical with the testimony of Luke regarding the apostles. Now, this goes on, and I might read some more um, some other time, but Irenaeus, uh, who wrote this big book uh, against heresies, he... He dealt with the heresies of the day, and he goes into great detail saying where these people came from and how um, they had a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. And the wonderful thing of this is we can see that, folks, we're not alone. Okay, Those of us who stand for the truth, we're not alone. We have so great a cloud of witnesses that are joined together into one body whether in heaven or in earth, we're one body. 
And Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, gave himself as a ransom. And he loves us. And sometimes it's easy to get discouraged when uh, people will put out hateful videos about you and call you a fool. But we can't let that bother us. We must press forward. And regardless of what they say, someday they're going to have to eat their words. They're going to have to give an account of what they said because you and I that stand for the truth, we're not the real target. The target is the Lord Jesus Christ because he said, if they hated me, they will hate you also. So understanding this, it should give us great joy. And knowing that Irenaeus battled these people centuries and centuries ago, same things, same tactics, same kind of people, um, outcasts and rejects of the true Christian church because uh, these wicked devils, they speak with a forked tongue and they lie on our Lord Jesus Christ. And they do not speak the truth but go forth to deceive, um, just like Satan does. He goes forth to deceive the nations and that's what his workers do. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I do hope to do more, though, regarding Irenaeus. Um, but until next time, God bless you all and take care.